Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here. That's an ish of a new campaign in Tiano, the last of you. Everyone for playing the city of Guangdong for uh, this time. I think it's the third time on this channel, but this time we're going to go with Fujitsu and have a good time with uh, Ibuka Masaru. So we can only have 18 seats. It's 1962, almost August, but we got to talk about the Facom 222 mainframe. Most would take one look at the head height machines being wheeled into Yasuda's Koshu headquarters and find quickly somewhere else to be. The beleaguered bankers and secretaries of Yasuda Holdings were busy individuals, with better things to do than become the minder of the, uh, some mysterious contraption. Only a small group of ten accompanied the machines. Fujitsu's Facom 222 mainframe computers to their destination before sitting at the seats assigned to them and thumbing through the provided instruction manual. Most were expressions of deep puzzlement, a little loss where to begin reading the 200 page document, but this was their job now and nobody wanted to lose it. Over the coming days, the student men were guided through the ins and outs of computing by the Fujitsu's instructors. Data entry, operations, output, storage, what had required a myriad set of discrete tasks in pen and paper before was all possible with a single interface. Bafflement was replaced by awe, followed in short order by a voracious curiosity. Even if many of them believe their abacus, a proficiency is sufficient to calculate at speed, they're not so arrogant to believe that they could retain more information than a machine in a workplace where knowledge was power. Knowing where the skeletons were buried was an, an ace unlike any other. So we actually reached almost 80% interest or average between interest and quality and a product profitability reaching 100%. Um, and we marketed towards J Japan, which is very cool. We get a tough crowd eventually. Also, usually when we start here, we start with a fighting here and uh, Malaya. But we already got everything done. So right now our economy is looking at 18%, 1.26 billion in surplus. Um, we're actually starting off this this part of the campaign very, very strongly. So, But a tough crowd. The smoke in the room was so dense that Ibuka Masaru could barely see the bureaucrats and politicians sitting across from him. Typical for these Yoko Sankai linked veterans. Most had been in government for decades. Already devoting much more attention to filling the room with cigarette smoke than they were to Ibuka's sales pitch. He wouldn't have been surprised if this was one of the little games they like to play instead of doing work. Overall, you can expect productivity increases of at least 30% within six months of implementing Fujitsu systems throughout the administrative departments. Potentially even up to 70% depending on how fast your workers take to it. Our engineers have been working on specialized administrative programs to further smooth out the process. The bureaucrats exchanged glances among themselves. The Ibuka wrinkled his nose slightly as he was assaulted by a fresh wave of noxious gases. And how many bombs can we expect in these computers? One bureaucrat asked, causing the morons around him to start cackling loudly. They're made by Chinese hands, are they not? How long will it take for them to break down? A week? Ibuka had, naturally, planned for this scenario. Openness to change had never been a strong point for the bureaucracy or the YSK. Of course I understand your concerns, gentlemen. He replied, doing his best to keep the irritation out of his voice. That's why I've taken the preliminary steps of making deals with private accounting firms and the Tokyo Stock Exchange analysts. Believe me, they will vouch for the efficiency of my products. Change one exhausting step at a time. The Ibuka Plan Ibuka Masuru, the Fujitsu, has approached Matsuzawa with a plan to write Guangdong's finances. To go back to the roots of Guangdong is a place for Japanese entrepreneurs to do business. In his words, money is life, and without taking emergency measures to stabilize investor confidence and correct Guangdong's budget, Guangdong is doomed. We can do what is needed to keep Japanese investors and capitalists on our side, even if that means we earn the resentment from the Cantonese, Japanese, and the Chinese people as we prop up the bus uh, Japanese businesses. And the fallout from the Yasuda crisis, uh, Yasuda collapse has shown us anything, is that we flirt with the destruction of Japanese firms that compromise our economic backbone at our own peril. While we are too late to do anything to save Yasuda from its own excesses, we must take care of those Japanese businesses and entrepreneurs in Guangdong and ensure that the damage done does not spread any further than it already has. The belt tightens on. The neatly trimmed stack of files glided across Matsuzawa's desk, its cardboard cover utterly minimalist in its features. No date, no title, not even a formal greeting to the chief executive. Only the cobalt blue two half rings of Fujitsu lying in the header and staring back at Fujitsu and Matsuzawa in silence. He sighed and began leaving through the pages. The contents were just expected of Ibuka Masaru. The wording was brief, succinct, lacking in corporate jargon, yet pregnant with professionalism nonetheless. The line charts were a cocktail of monochrome and color, row after row of dipping arrows, illustrating with perfect clarity the dwindling employee numbers of Fuji. Kawa, manufacturing in Hong Kong, Yamazaki Leisures in Macau, and hundreds of the like. The message was clear. Japanese investors in Guangdong are jumping ship, and the instant flow of capital between Guangdong and those crucial notables dries up. Guangdong dies. The solution cut down civilian subsidies, bureaucratic sectors, anything the government could reallocate one bit of money from. Matsuzawa lifted his head from his paper, and of course, Ibuka's per perpetually bespeckled into his disinterested face slid into his view. Don't get me wrong, your proposal is very much a point on. Or on point, he noted dryly, but how do you suppose we convince? And we have to convince people of everything in the world will end up with nothing done at all, was Ibuka's taunt. Lace reply, you're the banker of the four of us, Matsuzawa. Surely you understand better than anyone else that nothing's too extreme when it comes to basic finance, or has Morita's bleeding heart gotten to you? Matsuzawa shrugged, basic finance is basic finance, he knew that. What he also knew was that the Guangdong simply couldn't afford to sever its lifeline from the home islands, and that Ibuka's indeed reminded him of that. If you insist, prevent capital flight. 
Though the worst case scenario imaginable for Guangdong is widespread capital flight. A cat catastrophic loss of confidence by Japanese investors who pull their funding back towards safer havens in Japan or elsewhere. While no country in this sphere appears particularly economically safe at the moment, Guangdong differs in that its industries will weather on the vine if foreign investors begin pulling the money out, so we must reassure the investor community that we have their best interests at heart even in difficult times. Um, if you want to read about Made Redundant, please go right ahead. Um, so, I think I've read that one before. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I've read that before, so. Will it ever get better? We'll see, as we do have a product that we are also working on right now. That'll be done within 12 days, so we have, uh, average, uh, quality's okay. 12 days, huh? Oh, we definitely won't be able to get that one done. Um, we definitely won't get up. Uh, 12 days. 12 times, uh... Yeah, we won't be good. Really, the last one we can really do is this one. Or we just say screw it, screw that, that, and just uh, we're selling to the Chinese market right now. You know, we could just do this, increase product, product, product profitability. You know, what, we're just gonna do that one instead. Screw it. Two days left, so it is what it is. We're selling to the Republic of China just because we can. Oh, we have this Type 600 telephone, unsurpassable performance with perfect telephone. It is a perfect telephone. This is not a telephone, though. How silly one might say. It looks in every respect like a telephone, the likes of which have graced the world for over 50 years. A rotary dialing system and a sleek black casing. In fact, many would say that they've seen 100 or more of the like, just like the Type 600. But appearances can, of course, be deceiving. Yes, what? What? The word spoken by what? anyone struggling to hear words spoken over the scratchy, tinny, white noise so common in the existing phone systems, except the Type 600. When a listener hears the voice of the counterparts coming through the Type 600's receiver, crisp and clear, as if they were standing beside the listener, that was when the word impossible would be used. A purchase would more often than not fo then follow. This is not a telephone. It's a paradigm shift. As we have a cup of co not coffee, but uh, tea here. We get one more seed. We didn't get as much as we can before. Uh, get some more opinion from China, though, which is nice. We get sunken cost, huh? Repeal the RS RLSO. And what do we get from that? More growth? Nice. The Suzuki's revised labor standards ordinance is and will be a miles or millstone around the neck of both our current and future governments, making promises to the people that simply cannot be kept. The meticulous construction of the bill and its intense optimism will only constrict the administration of our future recovery measures. Our pensions in Japanese business law, we want the legislation repealed for obvious reasons, and so shall, it shall be done. If we want to think about recovery, we must free ourselves from breathing room by issuing an annulment of the revised labor standard ordinance and in its entirety. Nice. So we can close out of this one. Uh, it's not good over here, and we're going to try to continue cutting down on corruption because it's already at 68%, which is insane. Lehigh. Subsidizing the time of want. Economists warn that economies aren't ready for wide sweeping government intervention. Rely on the middle class investments. More institution support. I do like that. Increase growth by 1%. 0. 0.5. More institution support or more Japanese expat support? Uh, well. What do we have? 70%. I want to get at least a 50% because I don't want any negative modifiers here. So, and that's turning a corruption. Subsidies in a time of want. But I do want to maximize our growth. Uh, Guangdong is a land of wealth and prosperity, but for the foremost, it's the home of opportunity. For centuries, the Pearl River Delta has been the site of international investment and trade, and it's only desirable to keep it in such with our Japanese partners and patrons. The best way to keep these companies in the nation is to make it as easy as possible for them to get a fortune here. Make a fortune here. Well, they advertise Guangdong to be a safe haven for Japanese investment, even in those turbulent times where economic security is also so scarcely found. Our future lies in the innumerable treasuries flocking in from across Asia, and it's only up to us to welcome it. Hey, at the same time they're gone, restoring confidence. Uh, Nozawa Hideke fidgeted from his back row seat, foot tapping nervously against the auditorium's linoleum floor. Investors from Nomura, Nikko, Daiwa, and Yama Yamaichi, sharks among Guangdong's economic minnows, and himself included, occupied its frontmost rows. Will the Legislative Council ensure prior contracts are honored, said the executive from Nikko Securities? The CSU is surrounded or cerserated with him. Nozawa, Nozawa. Not if nobody knew if even a year's old agreement meant anything after you sued a film. There is a shirt of your rights, gentlemen, replied Chief Executive Matsuzawa with the crowds dang quiet, for I shall respect them in our courts. We will likewise implement tax cuts and regulatory forbearance, particularly in audits and labor inspections, after due consideration of your situation in these difficult times, Guangdong's future is in your trade. Your interests are thus mine as well. Nozawa scrutinized Matsuzawa, his healthy hue, commanding posture, very wry smile. That was no pa pallbearer for his suit's funeral, no. Matsuzawa looked better than he had in weeks, and in good health, and more importantly, in his element. The auditorium fell once silence again, but the time unpunctuated with Nozawa's heels. You soon may be dead, but I'm still here. My word is still my bond. Oh boy. Oh boy. Because we will be working on getting the police as much as possible, so we'll do the subsidies one and tried and true. What is Guangdong's place in the world? Our small state at the foot of the Pearl River Delta has been the forefront of international trade with Chinese markets for as long as we can remember. It's our destiny as a people and a nation. 
Um, today, we're the conduit for wealthy Japanese investments in China so that we can make use of the fruits of land and labor for the benefit of the Japanese companies operating here. With initiative, determination, and expertise inherited from the rich merchant tradition of our ancestors, we remain true to the founding spirit of Guangdong. Um, I think I read this one before. So China had been an investment. Or maybe not. There was an investment in the Empire of Japan. I paid for with blood, toil, and treasure. It left millions of her sons dead, and though she had merged the victor, the years since she had shown that the nature of the victory was a slow strangulation from, with the laurels. A book of master had grappled with the question of how to turn the black hole that was China into an opportunity to finally begin reaping the returns that should have come long ago, and of course for Shuzitsu, for Shu, for Shu, Fu Jitsu to take first picks. It was with this mindset they looked at the sunken face of Gao Zongwu, the president of China. He listened about how Nanjing could barely communicate with massive city centers like Chongqing, despite how important they were for tax collection and policing. He heard about how the center received reports of bandit attacks and unsurrendered soldiers all those years later, days or even weeks after they had happened. Finally, the president decided to let him in on the big secret. Despite China covering such a great span of the map, the reality was that the country was really just a coast and the cities close to the cities. Or cities close to the coast. Everything else was one great question mark. In his engineer's mind, one thing became clearer and clearer. This was not a question of legitimacy or for some arms. Those are important, but secondary. No, this was simply a matter of communications. And this was exactly what Fujitsu, Fujitsu dealt with. Ibuka Masaru glanced at his interpreter and began, I trust you are aware of what a computer is, Mr. President. Man in the mirror. Uh, if you want to buy this one, please go right ahead. I've read this one before, definitely. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. Leave me before it's too late. Ah, yes. Man in the mirror. Uh, this is kind of following the last one. I was going to look at myself in the mirror and see nothing. I may have read this one before. So tried and true, and then if you want to read about breaking even, please go right ahead. Top. God dang it, come on. To the bottom. As well as auction off Yasu's assets. Taking inventory. Um, playing favorites. Top it off. Uh... We need more money, no money, no more, no less. Going once, and going twice, of course, because we will be doing a fair game. As beneficial, as maybe to get Guangdong companies, priorities, auctioneers over other companies for favors from the Legislative Council it would be unprofitable in the long run since the Yasuda Crisis was caused by deep corruption involving much of the Japanese government, armed forces, and industry. Any sort of corruption or dealings would supposed to earn doom and disgrace for administration. The auction must remain as fair as possible. Since we do so. Nice. Of course, we have uh, too much to assume. What an irritated chief executive Matsuzawa, well, most is a banker. Uncertainty. Whether it be about a. <clears throat> uh, a, 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 a client's ability to pay their debts or de details of the next policy announcement by the Bank of Japan. How many hours did Matsuzawa waste waiting for a scrap of information necessary to move millions of yen in a stroke of a pit's pen? It was annoying in, in normal times, a matter of life and death in crisis. Nobody doubted that Guangdong could face a colossal crisis. Much as all the reason, therefore, it felt him to dispel any uncertainty among the Japanese in no uncertain terms. The open-ended commitment to provide capital injections and subsidies lost revenue had worked at first. The market stopped their nose dives into the abyss, while Guangdong Yen stabilized against its Japanese counterpart. All seemed well. Then the phones began rowing without respite, their shrill thrilling, a trilling, echoing through the government. Complex as the established lines were overloaded. <clears throat> a flood of applicants swept into Matsuzawa's office, each pleading their case in ink and letterhead. A few were precautionary, precautionary requests for capital to ride out of the storm. Many more were desperate appeals for a stay of execution in the market's hand. Oh boy, and Matsuzawa would have to approve almost all of them, for the investors expected no less. They'd be freed from uncertainty, even if every application approved widening Guangdong's ga gaping fiscal chasm. The gratitude of the Japanese weighed heavily on Matsuzawa. Oh boy. We might lose our seats by three. Oh, we're gonna lose our seats. The ebook of plan has failed. Oh. Oh well, we could round up agitators, of course. Um, we could crack down on organized crime, maybe. Of course, the curfew. Would you like increasing police support? You know, and turning a blind eye, of course, too. So I don't remember which one I did. Whether the storm sold the empty throne. We could contact Chung Kong, or we could also hail Hitachi. We could do that one too. I'm not really sure which one I want to do. Uh huh. 
An interesting proposal has been offered by Ibuka Masuda Fujitsu Limited, so we will do this one. To fill a vacant seat in the Legislative Council of the Hitachi Corporation of Manchukuo, the electric subsidiary of the Nissan Industrial Concern, many objections have been raised to the fact that Hitachi originates from Manchukuo, and therefore is a direct rival to Guangdong's economic growth and projection, which makes it unfit for entry into the Council. Ibuka, however, has assured us plentifully that Hitachi would only be of use to us, whether they are too weak to act against us, but also help obstruct Sony's political influence, ensuring a political scene dominated by Matsushita and Fujitsu. Whether Ibuka's words are correct, we'll have to wait and see. Fujitsu buys Yasuda for a price. The auction of Yasuda's assets have been handled with all. The delicacy of a butcher carving up a hog's carcass, with a prize building or business unit priced and doled out of the bidding buyers without affection or enticement or sentiment. The fallen gavel held another part of Yasuda's corpse sold for parts, striking home with a resounding thud of a cleaver and sundering bone. As the final bell rang out on the hushed auction floor, the assembled press tallied the winning bids, seeing which one of the tycoons would walk away with the lion's share. They turned to see Ibuka Masoru in a seat, tapping his fingers in irritation as Morita and Matsushita decamped towards the exits. Chief Executive of Matsuza Matsuzawa locked eyes with Ibuka for a moment, with a Ibuka's eyes narrowing and seething anger, before the reporters mobbed them for the comments. Matsuza walked off stage without a word, a smirk tucking at the edge of his mouth. The transfer of ownership conferred power as well as assets, and instead of reason that the press had no further interest in Matsuzawa. But they were certainly interested in the king's ransom. Fujitsu had paid for Yasuda's assets, a sum that Matsuzawa would put to good use. Nothing in life is free, Ibuka. Fujitsu has won the auction for the remaining Yasuda's assets, however, the cost proven to be too high. They only receive 5% of the assets, while the remaining 4% is distributed to Sony and Matsuzawa. Uh, no, or Matsushita, I should say, and then we can uh, actually pay off a little bit of our debt, which is not bad overall, but we are still trying to maintain public order and whatnot as we're trying to also eliminate a lot of this god-awful corruption. The crack seeps. Matsuzawa gave the go-ahead. Hitachi will have its place in the Legislative Council, boom the blunt, eternally disinterested voice of Ibuka Masaru from the ebony speaker. Komai Kenichiro joined up tight, or upright, in his leather sofa. The chilly morning wind of Hinsinking hissing briskly at his cheek, that was fast. I assume that our most respectable chief executive has grown receptive to Nissan's presence. Or pliable, he mused, as he carefully rinses his reply of any hint of surprise. You bet. He's desperate for anything and everything that could keep the markets and governments afloat. And it seems he isn't entirely averse to outsider's help after all. The book is words dripped with uh, bile. To be expected from the haughtiness of an engineer, I do have to admit, however, that Hitachi's heavy industry commodities are a unique and fascinating breed, and with Hitachi's forthcoming integration, I do expect those products to bring new economic miracles to the table. Consider me honored, then, to join you in Guangdong's prosperous ventures, Kumai recited yet another perfunctory remark before nesting the speaker back inside the handle. Immediately, a smirk was across his lips, a backdrop by the smog-laden horizon of northeastern China outside. Pliable indeed. The uncultured brutes in the South had always been the most pliable, most prone to compromise and feebleness. All the pretentious talks of free market and self-sufficiency be darned. Their mangled response to Yasuda is living proof. Pli pli pliability brings forth receptiveness and salvation. How else would those savages see at the last boons of unimpeded human labor of an economy safe within the iron grip of the state of the Manchukuo model that reigns and deserves to reign supreme for all eternity? Kamai stood to his feet and sped towards the suitcase. The next plane to Koshut is, the three pros of the South will be cleansed of rot with his own two hands or for however long it takes. The pan Asian cause waits for no one and nothing to do. There's barely anything to no do for once, Taju Ta Takuji notes. It seems everywhere in his office, even the objects inside have taken notice of well. Silence pervades his surroundings, not even the air that he breathes makes noise. A bit unsettling, he thinks, but no matter. Setting himself down in the chair, he reaches over for the loan papers in his mailbox. All from the let go. Just memos notifying him of the date of their meeting to choose their successor. His successor, who would that be? Matsuzawa thinks to himself. It seems obvious to him. They'll pick from one of five, five companies. He cracks a stop. But it seems obvious to everyone who will be picked out of the five, either Ibuka, Morita, or Matsushita, will be chief executive after him. He smiles at ruefully, the very same men who held his government together during this disaster. The phone rings, interrupting his musing. Lazily picking it up, he recites the usual pleasantries expected of his position. The caller then tells him of his identity, edged with an end of ex sense of expectancy. Well, does would be expecting this? The chief executive strains his, uh, uh, immediately. Have we done enough? Have we saved ourselves? Ta Takuji's voice breaks slightly. He winces at his tone, a thought runs through his mind, chastising him. The man assures him that they've done what is necessary and all they could. Do not worry about your safety, the caller reminds Tajuki. Uh, uh, I've arranged for it. He releases the sile. He'll be fine, but at what cost to the people around you? Alone thought worms to the forefront, but think. The power balance shifts in the Legislative Council, and the four companies become five. Because we held Hitachi, they get two more seats. Kenichiro, Komai Kenichiro becomes leader of the uh, fascist party. Very cool as we're doing, uh, and the light spills in. It is, uh, <clears throat> to our most esteemed chief executive. 
It's coming to me to concern that a legislative apparatus has come to defilement by the newly admitted Hitachi personnel. Make no mistake, Hitachi Limited, for the entire duration of its existence, has been a constant, consistent, and unapologetic offender of labor exploitation. The blatant and complete disregard for the workers' basic subsistence, or subsistence, as well as wanton bloodshed through the hands of the Kwantung security battalions, as countless other Nissan and adjacent firms across Manchukuo has demonstrated time after time again without fail. We hereby appeal to use to see reason. To cease this appeasement to those abusers at once while Guangdong stands on the brink, otherwise we may be forced to resort to drastic measures. Yours is Zhuxin and Guangdong. Here it is, the dreaded backlash. Mao Zedong will sink his forehead into his right palm. You don't think these people would have the leverage to? Why wouldn't they? Morito arched over the stack of letters on his desk, practically hissing into Mao Zedong's face. None of them, no single Zhuxin or Chinese within our borders with a single shred of dignity will want anything to do with these own savagery. One more ride or one more call to Tokyo and I guarantee you there will be one last indelible stain on your ledger. And here I thought you know better. It's not like I have a choice. You do, Morita locked his gaze back onto Matuzawa's eyes, irises glimmering with fury behind spectacles, along with curiosi curiously, a tinge of yearning. Get Chong Kong into the legislative council, have it as a counterbalance against Hitachi's worst successes. Please don't wait until people literally have their backs against the wall and have nothing more to lose. I understand. So in his transfer, they share Yusuke's assets to their trusted ally, Chong Kong, allowing them to take part in the legislative council once all is said and done. The orchid's eating. Look at this. The YS-11 cargo planes landed one after another, an endless stream of trickling into the tarmac at Koshu Airport, forming a neat line in front of the cargo terminal. The orchard emblem of the Empire of Manchuria was stenciled into their fuselages. Uh, the mustard yellow shining against a uh, gunmetal gray, even as the planes disgorged pallet after pallet of cargo crates bearing the circular emblem of Hitachi Limited. Along with the crates came the Hitachi workmen, and an army of Manchurian Chinese men scurrying meekly about the, under the watchful eyes of the Japanese taskmasters, the efficiency. Well, they efficiently loaded the cargo onto the waiting trucks, even as the native porters and steve doors of Koshu watched guardedly from the shade of the terminal building. Inside Koshu itself, a fleet of buses, limousines, and Kapatai trucks pulled up outside of the vacated Yasuda headquarters, the outline of its insignia still visible where the sun and rain had never had the chance to stain the concrete. The Zhujian and Japanese expatriates, out just outside, watched as Manchurian men, filled in their new nests, burrowing into the Koshu cityscape under the protection of the dreaded Kampai Tai. That evening, the assembled business elite of Guangdong welcomed Hitachi's president, Komai Kenichiro. Ladies and gentlemen, we come in peace, Komai had stated, with a practice cheer, barely making, masking the cold stiffness in his champagne toast. It was met in kind with stilted applause and lukewarm handshakes. The sole exception was Kono Miyazaki of the Kampai Tai. With a rare smile on his face, one that Komai returned wholeheartedly, an invasive species, Ghost in the Millstone. <clears throat> Um, I think I read this one before, so if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. So, make money makes ghosts turn the mill, indeed. So, if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. We don't have a lot of Chinese support, only 27%, 37%, and 80, almost 87% there, so that's not bad for that. The things that change. Um, if you want to read this one, I'm pretty sure I read this one before, too, so if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. Then his loved ones came to view, and he breathed a sigh of relief. So, plenty of corruption. Not good. And 64 economic review. Oh, we don't know about this place. Go ahead. We should go both get back to work. So we need to expect a GDP of almost 24 billion and things that won't. We don't know about that place. Go ahead, too. Nice. That's just not great. Only 5% growth. Oof. John Kong enters the Legislative Council. And we don't know about that. There you go. But we're actually read about Tachi. New accommodations. Eh, there's that one. She swallowed her pride except for everything that came after. Her. Probably still getting worse too. God dang it. Hitachi now enters. Um, and now before I bid my farewell to this honorable institution, let us once again all, all for our sincerest welcome to the compatriots from Hitachi Limited of Manchuria, joining us in a collective endeavors for the Pan-Asian cause. For who wouldn't? The nearly 45 degree bow, the all too brilliant smile, the sheer courteous, courteousness emanating from the orchid em emblem aligned jet black suit that would leave even the most seasoned of Mats Matsushita's cronies and all. To give him the slightest glance at Komai Kenichiro, and you could tell the man from Tsiking meant business in the best kind, too. Yet underneath all the applause and sincerest welcomes among the Sea of Guangdong's elites lurk the usual fear, the usual skepticism, but with an unspoken consensus, the stone faced Manchurians don't belong here, not yet. For Kamai, however, it meant that little. As the session adjourned, so came his time to make his acquaintances with the great tycoons of Guangdong. As perfectly expected, they were the ones to submit to unease, not him. Matsushita and Masaharu's nods were brief, curtain, and as if one could somehow conceal the trembles in his handshake, Murido cared even bother to iron out their disdain and apprehension tingling or tinging his cheery greetings. And Li Kishin, the local as if, couldn't even finish a sentence without stuttering or reaching for his drenched forehead. What a great man to work with. And then there's Ibuka Masaru. Self proclaimed visionary, shining forth with a crap eating grin plastered on his face, welcome to the Legislative Council. A shrill booming voice froze into whispers as he his mouth grazed Kumai's ear. You know what you're here for, I didn't let you in to do anything funny. Notice Kumai had several to chuckle. 
Rest assured, gentlemen, he raised his voice, as he done again and again among Gyo's cramped conference halls, only this time all Guang Gong shall make his audience, his subjects. We have uh, a mandate to fulfill, after all, don't we? Yep. Uh, doing your job, there you go. And then mining your language, of course, too. Mm, Cracked on petty corruption? Well, if we have to. Because, my god, it's it's too high. Mining your language. You two know each other? Let the games begin. There you go. And now, the chief executive declares Guang Dong's next chief executive to be. Some final decisions will be sorted before the final victory can be determined. So, cool. Hey, Mass was a data storage. Lots of sheets of paper, huh? We can fit in a lot of sheets of paper. Nice, more political power gain, that'll come in handy. 2% is not enough, but I'll take whatever we can get. It's the only way forward. Ibuka Masaru. 55 minutes, that's how long it took in those slugs to get themselves again to proclaim as Guangdong's next chief executive. Had times been different, Ibuka would have thrown a scathing tyrant upon whoever was responsible for this mess. But for the once, he found himself too overcome with exultation to utter a word of complaint and more. He stood on his feet as the unmistakable sound of his name blared across the hall and rustled through the row of seats, and met the silent approval of Fujitsu's men and through the sudden glares from the other corners of the complex, already his miles running at optimal capacity. His glee evaporated as hastily as they had followed upon him. It took a full 14 seconds for him to make his way to the aisle and a full 10 more to reach a podium. Both demonstrable design flaws in the complex's design. The seats are too crowded for one. Too little legroom allowing for too little leeway for mobility. The absurd distance of the aisles could certainly use some shorting as well. How the most brilliant of minds aspire to make themselves heard, if every one of them were to be wasted away charging amongst wit witless mules. In fact, now they stood at the crux of the whole structure with the 99 men in full view. More and more glaring errors began to make themselves felt. Fujitsu's men are too far away. The outdated incandescent lamps are both a waste of energy and a detriment to blueprint presentations. In fact, then, this entire seat arrangement is an utter farce. It's a miracle worms like Morita Kao are allowed anywhere near. Morita. He finally noticed that he sat at fifth row, lips trembling, and white face, or face white as sheep. If he only had known better, Akeo, Masaru mumbled as he grasped his microphone and not felt the icy touch of metal, but the beating heart of Guangdong within his palms. Gentlemen, a new air is upon us. We salute Chief Executive Ibuka Masaru. Following uh, Matuzawa, Takuji's interim reign. The representative of, this, of Guangdong, a legislative council sworn in Ibuka Masaru of Fujitsu Limited as a new chief executive. An engineer by trade and belonging to Guangdong's hardline corporate faction, he has sworn to build a state based on meritocratic principles and a society whose technical expertise matches that of Fujitsu's laboratories. A sign to point of the Suzuki administration's efforts towards labor reform, Ibuka has expected a continued stance against increased welfare towards Guangdong's indigenous population. It's expected to draw significant opposition from the reformist elements of the Legislative Council, particularly from his long-term rival and former business associate, Morita Akeo of Sony, to excellence in all things. Civil War in Ghana, who cares? Um, set of cameras? Yeah, that'd be good too. And offices. Every man in Guangdong knows his trade. Black Chief Executive Ibuka knows that the corrupt deals happens between men exchanging power for money in high-rise offices by setting up cameras in these offices. We can catch corrupt officials and make an example out of them. Oh, hey, his box. Well, let's see. Li Hai's mind never rested. His brain was a churning volcano of new ideas and designs. Whereas younger men dreamed of pretty girls with gentle smiles and whatnot, uh, Hei dreamed of blueprints with sharp lines and electrical notation. When he awoke from such dreams, he would tumble out of bed, seize paper and pencil, and try to capture the flitting images in his mind's eye. Whether he always had it, he, whether he had always had it within him, or whether the days of the living within Koshu seemed to simply hammered it into his head, he had no idea. His inspiration was fed by his many hundreds of after-school visits to manufacturing firms and insight from technical journals he devoured. He learned and wrote, and what he wrote went into an empty toolbox he carried with him everywhere. And his gut, he knew that the contents of his brain box were novel and had the potential to change the world. Hey, acted upon this instinct. He made time to visit the top firms of Guangdong and offer some ideas to them. He knew how predatory the companies could be and had no illusions about the fact that some of his ideas might be stolen. That's okay. Hey was very careful to present only the ideas he could live without. They were currency, it means getting them inside some doors that would otherwise remain closed. The very best inspiration came from observing how the big companies operated, and what Hay gathered from these visits was made so much sweeter by the knowledge that the companies thought they were coming out on top of the deal. A mine like a raging fire, a approach to a policing evolving into the pervasive Kenpate networks. Nice. And really, the campaign now is beginning about half an hour in. Chief Executive Ibuka. Ooh, these books are kind of cool. Ibuka, Masaru, a man of purpose. Indeed, conviction has proven the mightiest weapon of all, and with one holds his ground in the face of adversity and triumphs over those who mock his unrelenting march forward as mere folly. Only Ibuka knows what's best for Guangdong, why and as a coward and naysayers might be, only he knows a path to a brighter future. And this truth alone cements his superiority over lesser men like Morita Akeo and Matsushita Masaharu. Conviction is his raison d'etre. 
I don't know how to pronounce. As much as it has been the driving force behind his ascension to the realm of Guangdong. They show already the gadgets and finally begin Guangdong's renovation into what it has always meant to be. A true beacon of innovation, where the sphere's brightest minds shall convene and labor to their hearts contemporary to the betterment of all mankind. Our chief executive, Oyibuka Masaru, looks forward to the future in debt etched in silicon and lit with neon. A visionary dream. Ooh, more seats. Engineer's touch. Ibuka Masaru, a man of expertise. <clears throat> what is a man, or <clears throat> what is an engineer, the unyielding backbone of progress if his mind is to be bogged down by the nonsensical ramblings shamelessly disguised as ideological principles, and by hordes of pen pushers content with cowering behind barricades of documents and walls of cash? No, Ibuka is an engineer in the purest sense, a futurist above abstractions and irrationality. He has come to grasp better than ideologues and bureaucrats ever could the ultimate nature of a macro macroscopic global secure society, but it's a system of equations. It's inhabitants a plethora of variables within and the tenets <clears throat> of science are definitive solution. Brotherly competition. The chief executive sat in his new office, overlooking piles of reports, messages, and paperwork. Sifting through the various stacks, their gaze came to rest upon a series of documents detailing Guangdong's elder brother in the sphere, Manchukuo. The report detailed Manchukuo's path to the chaos of the Yasuda crisis, where disparate factions within the same banding within the state banding together under the figurehead of Asian Guryo Puyi. Even now they claim to be the sphere's greatest success, the light that shone the brightest. Such words only filled the chief executive with fire. Suzuki had made many mistakes during his tenure, but when it came to Guangdong's relationship with Manchukuo, he'd been one on the right track. Manchukuo might not be an explicit enemy of Guangdong, more of a rival, but the ways are old, out of touch, and soon to be left in the annals of history. Guangdong stood for a new approach, it innovated and disrupted an economic status quo that was becoming ever too comfortable. If Guangdong could finally best Manchukuo economically, it would only serve to vindicate the chief executive, and all the great minds like him in Guangdong. A new economic age beckons. You bet it does. This land is my oyster. It has barely been a week and Murray's already had pressed least stinky fingerprints all over the government complex. I mean, 10 new Chung Kong names on a day on the first floor. Uh, mumbled Ibuka with a mouthful of bok choy, as if there wasn't someone else's opinion they forgot to ask about. Oh, Africa. Before they turn the whole darn place upside down. And if by someone else you mean the two of us, I agree. Matsushita chuckled as he downed another plastic cup of jasmine tea. Three, of course, to be counting Mr. Komai. His voice was cordial. The look he flashed Komai seated to his left on the round table. Anything but. That would make three of us versus Marita and at least two. They might be one company short, yes, but no less dangerous. Yeah, they're bad news. I saw it coming. You saw it coming. And what else? He both shrugged as he leaned back in his chair. All that's left to do for Komai is to work his campfire time magic or whatever <clears throat> he does best. And Komai, Komai, are you even listening? Hello? And there Komai Kenichiro sat, oblivious to the clank of planes and swoons around him. Eyes frozen on the chopsticks in the right hand. Caught between two wooden halves or a roll of flour, wrapped around a serving of mince meat, and his fingers squeezed and squeezed, chunks of mince foamed the news out from the seams as they did a dark red soy sauce down on the tablecloth below. For all that time I spent in Manchuria, he mumbled. I never got to visit a meat factory and learn how to make pigs into pork. A shame, really. He raised his head, meeting Ibuka and Matsushita's buffalo glares. I appreciate our breakfast today, gentlemen. Hargao Xiu Mai, Mai Lai Ko Chong Fan, and others raise a chopstick with a roll of flour. You don't find these names on a Japanese hotel menu. It's really a treat to try things out for the first time again. And we all have plenty of firsts in our lives, wouldn't you say? The visionary's dream. Ibuka Masaru, a man of ambition. The jewel of the South in his dreams is to be the ideal laboratory, a slave no more to intuitive paperwork and counterproductive regulations. Its occupants, men of unparalleled faculty in their own right, no longer caged animals awaiting slaughter by spineless office bears with willfully ignorant of the potential of human in intellect. An engineer's paradise, a greenhouse of mirror, where those who excel show Roman shackled and ready to find Guangdong society beyond the wildest of imaginations. Possibility is infinite. Ibuka Masaru surveyed the crowd seated before him, his pride gushed from his heart. Everyone was here, and he could tell at a glance, all 203 of them, neatly dressed, all looking at him, no, up to him, <clears throat> uh, with expectant gazes. The brightest among brightest of minds, together in Fujitsu's headquarters in Koshu, the new nexus of Guangdong's future. Ladies and gentlemen, I fe I, he felt something willing in his eyes, but immediately forced himself to pause. No, Masaru, no petty emotions in the way. For too long, we've been forced to stay on the sidelines. Could our teeth and bear with Sony's asininity and Masashida's stagnation. No longer chip by chip and transistor by transistor, you, dearest friends, have won the good fight for Guangdong's future with their diligence and brilliance, and for this, I thank you all. And there was applause. But I ask you, he boomed to the microphone and the dining hall fell silent. Is our work over? No incompetence. Naysayers, cowards that once dead still litter the streets in every corner, and we destined pioneers like no other must not and will not stoop to their level. Unknowing lost himself on fire and brimstone. It is just that I hereby announce 600 more Facom 3, Facom 6034 modules as a prospective output for the next 350, 65, 65 days. 335 days. Aspire, ladies and gentlemen, to the renaissance of talent and excellence and the alignment that awaits us all ahead. Unknowingly, the watery beads within his eyes swelled further. Aspire, my friends, for you deserve nothing but your best. As the 203 waves of applause flooded over him, Ibuka Masu finally knew what he was rolling down his cheek. Tears. Tears for a long-lost friend who had uh, been alongside him in the Imperial Japanese Navy. A friend who had always told him that they both deserved nothing but their best. A friend who had truly believed in excellence, not welfare, tolerance, or any other piece of sentimental BS. 
But alas, Mori Takeo was dead. He had died with Tokyo Telecommunications 12 years ago. The future leaves no room for the past and the Manchurian Connection. Um, I read this one before, so if you want to this one, please go right ahead. So. I think we have some calls to make. Cool. 6%. That's better. Almost 7%. Peace conference is over, huh? Well then. Happy April, everybody. Happy April. And it's a bit laggy, but it is TNO. You know. Excuses, excuses. Even after hearing a book of screams, the man in the hard hat kept his butt planted firmly in the floor. His response a barely intelligible mumble. We've been promised a ten minute break for every ten hour, or every hour on the scaffolding. Chief, Yan, executive. So on, so I said on the contract. We listed the reach in his work wear pocket. In fact, I have the thing with me right now. Contract this, contract that. He book a spaz. He sees a wrinkled paper away from the worker. I'm telling you this, no. His head snapped around towards a vacant, half-renovated hall behind him. Right here, this is where your no hour work truly lies. Not written on scraps of junk paper, but etched into every one of those seats in floors and tubes. Things that actually are worth a darn. The words reverberated through his ivory-white walls of the reborn legislative council complex. His own blueprints made reality. It's all about this gratification of knowing in your heart that with your own hands, you did your part in creating something new, something beautiful. But this he turned back to the man, and you know I do very much pity you, because every second you waste here sitting around is another second spent being woefully unenlightened, he snapped. Now get back to work. As Orca gave the laziest note imaginable, he stood up and trudged away, Ibuka's mind wandered. How many Guangdong's laborers who had stooped to this? What about Fujitsu liaisons in the Leica who pledged their loyalty to him? Even Fujitsu wasn't about its contamination from sloths and lacquers, he knew it, slackers, he knew it, and it pained him every single day that he couldn't draw a camera to each of those people's heads. Yet despite everything, they were the only ones left in the crap of a corporate scene that he could rely remotely on anymore. Not exactly a high bar. A sigh escaped his mouth as he unfolded his wrinkled, half-torn contract in hand, which muffled him to a groan the instant he saw the party A section. Of course, Seke no Boru is behind this crap, that imbecile. Oh well, here comes the emotion of the day. Dragging Guangdong into the future. Mibuka Masaru, a man of unwavering dedication. Already confronting the new overseer of Guangdong's rebirth is our one infuriating rod after another, festering deep within its apartments, factories, and government halls under his very eyes. Stagnation, ignorance, and complacency. Gifted men and women consigned to irrelevancy and oblivion like forsaken pearls buried beneath the, the murky depths of the river. To the weak will at all, this might prove to be too a daunting task. Too insurmountable barrier, but Ibuka will endure, just as he always has done since his days in the uh, in Japanese Imperial Navy. Come whatever may, under the guidance of him and him alone, Guangdong will reclaim its deserved spot on the world stage, the upper bounds of possibilities, the definition of progress, and the apex of humanity's future will upon, which the reverberant gaze of billions would fall, even if many have to drag up their kicking and screaming. Not one, not one person with a hint of rationality should be allowed to stand in his way after all. If one single man could shatter all limits and attain true enlightenment for himself, why can't millions? And there's no place in Ibuka's vision for laggards or dullards. My growth probably be begin to improve. Oh, look at this. April 17th, 1964. At 6.35 a.m. Woke up from bed and probably headed for the government complex by foot. A healthy stroll for me, sure, but an utter nightmare for the drivers I encountered all along the way, all helplessly stuck in the morning rush within the mess of a street layout. No response from the city planning bureaus on the matter either, despite my repeated reminders. Shame. Apparently, an intervention from Fujitsu is in order. 7 to 12.15. Spent in the office of the chief executive, again poking hole after hole in the intricacies of bureaucracy. Security briefings on... Yuji, Yuji, district plummeted by another 40%, which screamed Yakuza or tribe bribery. Secretary complained with tears in her eyes about bureaucrats downright stares, outright refusing to hand in reports. Just the thought that Akio would turn a blind eye to those leeches makes my blood well, because there's no make no mistake. He definitely would have, at least now there's always room for improvement, provided that the dude is never to have his way again. 12 of 20. But I enjoy a bento downstairs as always. Good choice for when you don't have to waste any time at Matsushita's banquets. 1310. With Fujitsu reps from Hong Kong, some of whom I immediately identified as having a present at Tokyo Tele's acquisition, my erstwhile superiors, once prideful arbiters of mine and Okio's fate, now unable to even finish a sentence without bowing my way every 15 seconds. Nothing to be amazed at, really. After all, it is me, not Akeo. Not those slugs who seize a moment and earn his rightful place within Fujitsu with his own two hands, salvage it from obscurity and brought it back to the heights today. 1710. Wrapped up administrative work. 1735. Arrived at Fujitsu headquarters. As always, Guangdong's brightest men and women offered their welcomes with the most heartful of smiles. Don't forget, Masaru, that they deserve every bit of success they earn for themselves, just as you do. It's uh, 0 15 a.m. Another fruitful day comes to an end. You get six hours of sleep? Barely? Innovation cannot be born from wasteful legacy initiatives. Out with the old and in with the new. Fresh ink. Liquidate non essentials. Ooh, decreases, please. Oh, man. Purging competent. 
Lazy, corrupt, and simply unskilled, they will all be shown the door. Guangdong Civil Service Ordinance. Increase corruption, that's not bad. Raise expectations. Isolate inefficient firms. Survival of the fittest. Ooh. What's over this path? Addressing workforce def defects. A perfect machine requires a perfect operator. 10 point scale. Empower managers. And inequity. Never let it be said that Nibuka is unsympathetic to the commoner. If they have the ability, they should rise to the top. Eliminate downtime, huh? Encourage innovation. The churn. Push, punish mediocrity. Recognize excellence. You lose Zhujin and Chinese support. Talent search. The organized labor ordinance. Interesting. And whatever, bug fixing. Mistakes and efficiencies can be corrected. M malignancy, however, must be excised. The scum of Guangdong. And though the enemy of my enemy can still be useful, a useful tool. This is more corruption. Integrating the Yakuza into our security strategy, no longer gain corruption from Yakuza controlled states on the regions of Guangdong's interface. That's interesting. An unfortunate enemy. Draft a plan. It'll eradicate the triad hooligans in Guangdong. We'll do so most thoroughly. How much Yakuza control do they have? Big ambitions. Because I don't know which one we want. Do we want more police or do we want more Yakuza? Realistic expectations. Fixing the plumbing. Well, I kind of want to do bug fixing, maybe. Guangdong's domestic situations have been an issue from ethnic tensions to rampant corruption and ineffectual police forces and the ever present problem of unorganized and organized crime. The heavy-handed and ultimately failed efforts by the Suzuki administration to tackle this problem have only started to drag down Guangdong. Now in the chief executive's position, Ibuka plans to rectify Guangdong's fa fault and succeed where his predecessors have failed. Through ingenuity, technology, and uncompromising efficiency, the chief executive will access the bugs from the Guangdong system. The future Guangdong depends on it. Ringing up next door. Mm, I think I read this one before. If you're going to need this one, please go ahead. But I never said anything about Manchukuo. Because right now... How much corruption do we get? 0 0.05, which is not much. But if we can eliminate 0.15 every month, that'd still be pretty nice. And I really don't want any corruption here. That's not very efficient for us. So I guess we'll have to wait and see, because the product cycle is going to start in a month, so we got to save our political power up for all this. Drag it. Kicking and screaming. Because if we can get rid of that as fast as we can. The scum of Guangdong. Organized crime has been a persistent issue in Guangdong ever since its establishment. But the Yakuza and Tries not only disturb the social order, but jeopardize Guangdong's future through their general short-sightedness and insubordination. As the chief executives to forge Guangdong's anew, we need to be need both do need to be brought in line. Though the tribes represent a much greater threat in comparison to the Yakuza, the chief executive is content to play both against each other and use the resulting advantage to ensure both know that they're placed under our vision, inside and outside. The fluorescent billboards and neon signposts that kept their eternal watch over the streets, casting their artificial glow upon Guangdong's walks of life, teeming under their ages. What a change as of late, however, was a color, day by day. Swirling emerald, ruby, and amber lights, Koshi had come to know and shrank and dimmed, and watching over them was a cascade of sterile white and blue as the two half rings of Fujitsu insignia imprinted themselves on a Koshu skyline, heralding Chief Executive Ibuka Masu's splendid new reality from above. A sapphire last joined upon Yasukawa Yoshiko as she knocked on yet another door at the feet of the concrete jungle. What would be her place in this brave new world, she had yet to know. But door by door, she had already embarked on her pursuit for her answer, not just for a quarter, but also that the sky high rent would no longer be the sole thing keeping her in my company. The sapphire little lights shone upon Lama. Uh, how soon? As he walked away so hard from his three-hour shift, what would it be his place in this brave new world, he scoffed. A living heckhole, most likely, given all the rumors flying around the new advisors in the Department of Scheduled Overtime in the Poverty Districts just down the street. Can't wait for another dozen more fellow countrymen calling him a cocksucker tomorrow. This is our last shown upon Li Liang, Li Mei, Li Chun, and Li Wai. As the kept their heads buried in the half-empty plates in dejected silence, what would their place be in this brave new world? They already knew the cracks of falling houses nearby and the roars of excavators and bulldozers rushing past the windows had told them all the answers they needed. But a Hei Lihei, Li Hei, there was more to it all. On the streets of Koshu, the 17-year-old boy stood, the boundless sea of ivory and sapphire flecking within the uh, dark brown pupils, and slowly something began to begin to tick. Slowly, he saw his place within this world of light. Uh, very good. We need money. 
That's just way too much corruption. 1.42 every month. Nice. Bug fixing, eh? Oh, it takes 30 days. So we'll rush to that. Let's go with Guangdong. And then we'll rush to here, too. A useful tool. And then maybe after that, we are going to rush to this side, maybe? The following profits problem. Because we do want to increase the GDP. Work smarter. Knowing it's not the battle. Uncountable accountants. Replace manual administrative positions with automated labor in all forms. Of all firms, I should say. Offer an alternative. Test the throughput. Meet your new coworker and maybe an example and make examples of us all. Incipit automation. A question of infrastructure. An automaton is only as smart as we program it. Human ingenuity is balanced and we set it loose on a digital frontier. Ads amendment. Administrative digitization. Mandate a comprehensive digitization of administrative documents in all involved forms. Oh, I like that one. That sounds really good. One language. Emphasize interconnectivity. Decrease, increase in export profitability. A digital foundation. The feature should be written in bytes and code, not just silicon and copper. Ooh. I kind of like this one more because it helps property. So let me, you know what, let me know. Should we do uncountable accountants? Or should we do a question of infrastructure? I'll let you guys decide in the comments below. I like both. But all nighter. Huh. Hi glanced up at the clock and was shocked to find himself on the far side of midnight. It seemed like only minutes ago he retreated to his room to study. He sat on the floor. On his left knee was a Japanese dictionary. On his right was a blueprint for a new solid state processor created at Fujitsu. Uh, together they formed the goal of hey studies, understanding uh, <clears throat> the state of solid Solid state electronics and the master of the Japanese language needed to describe them. A book called Master was birthing a new world where the engineer was king. It was a world where Hay could reach ascending heights on the way on the power of his intellect alone, but his intellect needed training in the same way Climber did before attempting to scale a mountain. Seized by a thought. He opened his toolbox to scatter blueprints and ideas and dug out an idea he'd been working on for a week. The Fujitsu processor incorporated a transistor pattern that was so different from what Hay might have thought of. If we could just check the uh, circuit diagram. Hey, Leon called from across the hall. Hey, go to sleep. Hey, yes, he'd been too clumsy with a hasp on the toolbox and woken his father. Very carefully, he closed the toolbox and replaced the hasp. He didn't plan on going to sleep anytime soon, however. He had much work left to do if he wanted to be ready for the next round of meetings tomorrow. He imagined the looks on the Japanese engineers' faces when he greeted them in their own language. The discipline of a samurai and family secrets. You gonna be this, Mr. Head? We're gonna... Can't buy tie. Watch the docks. And the product cycle, my friends. We have 126 political power for it, which is not bad. Fujitsu Hitachi would be cool, but... Look at that, the Falcom 603 magnetic storage unit. Low cost, easy to maintain. I don't want to spend a radical amount of political power, but I'm going to spend a radical amount of political power. I'm not going to lower anything else that we have, because we don't have a lot of Chinese or Zushin support anyways. We're at 20, less than 27%. We are at less than 37%. We are at 87%. So we can burn some of that goodwill. What bug fixing? Cool. Uh, June 1st, 1964. Uh, 5.50 a.m. Tidy to tie, ready in sunglasses and surgical mask, and promptly headed into the early morning lights. <clears throat> um, uh, three quarters of an hour earlier than usual, certainly, and for good reason. Rumors of from the streets of consecutive pickpocket incidents around Wendell Road led to my journey to Fujitsu HQ yesterday afternoon. And it all somehow slipped also through the GPS fingers, too. Let's make today's walk to work a nice little detour, then. Wouldn't hurt to pay that relic of the street a visit anyways. Uh, at 6.23, reached uh, Wendell Wanfu Crossroads. Famous and prestige all across rumor China was once as unassuming street, they say, for its pottery, antiques, classical paintings, and calligraphic pieces, and the like, supposedly. All the abandoned storefronts lining the pavement of every four or five buildings, more or less at least with the center days of yore, seem to lend some credence to the credence to the m m curious myth. The shame, then, with the scaffoldings and bulldozers are already here, eager to do away with the old and welcome in the new. Some people call it sacrilege, is it? 627. My suspicions were once again confirmed. Well, a culprit hadn't been one individual, typical. Squirming between the trees and buildings was a gang of at least five vagabonds, two middle-aged, two adolescent, and one barely above ten from the looks of it. I watched beneath the concealments of my face as I snuck up on the blameless, unescorting pedestrians and plucked their positions under broad daylight. I watched, and sheer indignation came inches within overwhelming me, but I knew better. Impulse never solves problems, but rationality does, in 656. I arrived at the office, updated the great Ajito catalog with this morning's notebook entries, and sent it to the Tsushida. Supervisor of the precinct is Akamatsu Motoshige. If that man doesn't end up removed for negligence, then the GPF is well and truly beyond salvaging. Then again, given the beyond 
The abysmal state of the servants and protectors of Guangdong, even that might be too much to ask. It is 7 a.m. Our work lies ahead. A useful tool. The under rule is not something to be feared or eliminated, so long as it serves our purposes. And Yoko Hideke, the chief patron of the Yakuza in Guangdong, is more than amenable to working with us. The man's all about business, and so long as we ensure his business grows, he will make sure our mission to uplift Guangdong is undisturbed. A man of Yokoi's reputation, with intelligence experience from the Kempotai and unparalleled network of enforcers in the Yakuza, will be a powerful asset as we shine a light into the underbelly of Guangdong. Any more corruption? Sure. Mm, target market, huh? We're going to Iberia. Eighty-three days left. We're at forty-nine and thirty-one percent, which is not terrible. Could be better though. I I don't mind doing that one too. So right now, do we get anything else here? Yes. That one came back. This one came back. But I want to spend more political power on the other ones. Um, it's a little ahead of time, but whatever. Performance review. Um, I think I've read this one before. If you want to do this one, please go ahead. Or maybe not. You might have to alone in the office, milling over recent performance figures to the Nintendo playing card company. A modest enterprise, Yamauchi's firm was a producer of Hanafuda playing cards. He had a problem, however, the playing card market was just too narrow in time to run out for the firm's affairs to be set in order. A recent phone call delivered him to this. A sharp knock on the door jolted him awake, and a secretary entered, bowing politely. Entering with a security were two of Fujitsu's representatives. He sat heavily and fumbled around with his collar. He was not generally a nervous man, but he knew that this meeting determined. <clears throat> the whole future of Nintendo, after some meetings, one of the representatives began to speak. I trust you know who why we are here, Mr. Yamauchi. Since assuming the role of CEO, Mr. Ibuka has been eager to modernize outdated companies. Unfortunately, Nintendo's not quite up to his standards. He reached out and grabbed the playing card from the pack displayed on the desk, turning it in his fingers. Yamauchi was offended by the assertion, but knew better than to complain. Of course, I understand you, Mr. M Mr. Yamauchi replied. I've only I've done all that seems possible to boost your sales. What kind of innovation is Mr. Ibuka looking for? The representative threw the card down on the desk. Frankly, Mr. Yamauchi, we need to move beyond playing cards. He motioned to his colleague, who pulled out some documents from a briefcase and laid them on the desk. There's a technological innovation happening. Nintendo needs to be part of it. Please read through what we've provided. After a few more terse words, the representatives left, leaving you out to sift through the documents alone. There would be no need. There would be need to some may have some major changes. But I'm sure Nintendo could come out on the better of it than before. It's time for Nintendo to prove itself. It's like all of us when we we're young to, to the world. Forty-nine point nine percent. It's not terrible. Do at least once, I can reset the timer. Ah, I'll do both. A long walk off a short pier. Kawasaki, we have many. We're in a bit of this. Please go ahead and bag him and tag him. And it's almost July. Peace conference is over. Hey, advancements in computation of power technology. Nice. And there it goes. Scouring the streets. 9.55 a.m. Chief Executive. Ibuka observed the party seated in his office, who had assembled five minutes before the start of the meeting, as they had agreed. Masashida Masaharu. Uh, Komai and Commissioner Tushida of the police were reviewing their files until the soft turning of pages was interrupted by an opening door. You're late, Morita, Ibuka grumbled. <clears throat> Even as everyone else ga gaped at the unexpected arrival. Five minutes early is on time. On time is late. That's what they taught us in the Navy, if you don't recall. They taught me that in school, too. Morita's eyebrow twitched as he sat beside Masashita, who showed more visible surprise than Morita himself. I was informed the meeting was at 10. Did that change? I suppose you didn't get the memo, Ibuka remarked icily, knowing full well that Morita hadn't been sending, sent anything of the sort. We we're just getting started. Commissioner Shushida wiped his bald scalp with a handkerchief before clearing his throat. Our hands were full dealing with the triads in the Yakuza ever since the chaos of Yasuo's collapse, even with the more funds it would take time to clear the streets. We'll buy you the time you need, Ibuka Sita, before returning to Masashida and Komai. Get whatever contacts you have with the Yakuza and tell them to get in line. Even if their activities are valuable to us occasionally, my patience has its limits. As Masashida and Komai both nodded. Uh, Ibuta, Ibuka, turn to Morita. Whatever you may think, Morita, I will not countenance the triad's interest in wasteful pursuits. Gambling and idleness are scourges. If the triads won't walk away from the Mahjong parlors and underground Pai Gao matches, we'll shut them down, we'll shut them down for them. Morita's face paled. Ibuka moved on. I was trying to get more. Uh, stuff here too. Three. And we're not there yet. Come on. Pop one. There you go. I ask and it does. I ask and it does. I love it. 
Well, that's after a useful tool. So we have that one. An unfortunate enemy. Draft a plan. Fix the plumbing. Is there anything else down here? On the streets. And we'll make sure the people b uh, below us follow Fujitsu's example. At the top. A good example must be set by Fujitsu. Follow the paper. The right people in the right places. The Guangdong Anti-Corruption Ordinance. Ears everywhere. Microsecondem. Statistics do not lie. The Guangdong Modern Police Ordinance. Eyes everywhere, we shall all see. We'll begin the dissection. Guangdong's current economic state is appalling. The inefficient systems dotting its structure and the abhorrent and careless management of its assets have rendered rapidly descending in one foot in the grave. A full-scale intensive a dissection will have to be performed on Guangdong's inner economic apparatus to discover the exact cause of the despicable play, but also the way it led to the swift and profitable reconstruction. Sewing a win. On a small grid in Denkoshu, Chief Executive of Ibuka Masaru issued yet a new edict without consulting the Legislative Council. As Suzuki and Matsuzawa had done with that kind of thing on a similar regular basis, this came as no surprise. What came as a surprise was its contents. The new edict, called the General Law on the Standardization of Izushin Identity, purported to rationalize the criteria by which one could apply to become a Zushin. Before, and to be able to get registered as Zushin, was no longer merely about adapting Japanese customs and Japanese languages and lifestyle. Ibuka seemed to believe that uh, Hatsu Mode and Aizatsu and cries of Tendo Haika Banzai and the like were not enough to make a Zushin, even though it had been more than sufficed for Matsuzawa and Suzuki, <clears throat> and their predecessors, or even on the whole of Guangdong. Instead, the chief of executive decided to promote quantifiable measures, education, uh, exceptional merit, whatever that was, contributions to society, and so on. All this was innocuous in and of itself, if one did not read the exact between the lines. So others who did read and understand it, they knew that the threat that Ibuka's new dictate proposed. The status of Sujin could now theoretically be revoked, and with all the career opportunities and respect that came with it. That was a realization that set off a firestorm of controversy in the streets of Guangdong and resulted in the penning of a thousand hostile essays in various news newspapers throughout the state. But the firestorm faded for a while until the effects of the edict began to set in. It was only later recognized as the catalyst of a new time of strife. Huh. Well, we have 34 seats. That's not bad. Matsuzawa. Or Matsushita, I should say. It's got a bit more. We have incredible interest. Nice. Doing better every year. That's the goal. That's literally the goal. And then we'll cut down more on corruption. But the box stops where? I've read this one before, so please go ahead. We'll do this properly. Um, you know what? Let's save just in case real quick. Alright, and... We'll do it properly. For now. Probably a bad choice, but whatever. Oh, here's this one again. How many days left we have for this one? 35, that's not bad. What's approval from Japan and China right now? It's not bad. We could use more Chinese approval. Corruption went up a little more. God dang it. Coming to terms. Yokoi Hideke savored a mouthful of cigar smoke, letting the savory fumes roll over his tongue before exhaling even more. The plumes smothering all audiences as they sat at attention in their leather armchairs. They all dressed similarly in muted, expertly tailored suits and ties. And none of the shiny threads and gaudy colors of the street muscles with Yokoi's intelligence. And the trademark bow tie, the only mark of the status among men. Or among them. <clears throat> Boss, are you serious about that? One of the Yakuza men snapped, impatiently tapping a leaflet set on the table. I love to stick it in those triad dudes, but working under the police, my boys won't stand for this. That's right, no effing way. <clears throat> the remaining Yakuza lieutenants curse aloud, nodding in agreement, only stopped when Yokoi raised a single hand gently above his armrest. Let's not be hasty. Oh, Yokoi draw, think of this as a new arrangement. Ibuka, another lieutenant spat, sent this yesterday, and he wants an answer by tomorrow, acting like he owns the whole darn place. Look, Yokoi remarked Ghibli, drawing on a cigar as the temperature in the room plunged. The cops only kept things under their control because they could rely on us to fight the triads all day. Whatever the triads leave behind is ours and ours alone. The civil gangsters looked at each other as Yokoi tapped his cigar against the ashtray, and we respect you, Yokoi, the first lieutenant finally growled, but we're nobody's running dogs this time, this time only, and that's all we need, I assure you. Hmm. Decreases police control, which I don't like. But we should probably work on getting the stuff passed first. The inhabitants of Guangdong are in for a rude awakening. Too many of them are scientifically illiterate and intellectually bankrupt have been investing our streets and factories and laboratories and government institutions, nibbling away at Guangdong's creativity, productivity, and fiscal health, all while indulging themselves in ignorance and hedonism defiling our society and economic landscape whether they realize it or not. 
Let those mules blissfully drown themselves in their cesspit one last time, but they won't get another chance ever again. When the time comes, let's see how fast they scramble behind their pretty masks of insolence. Innocence and stand in the way of Guangdong's revival. Our hammers will strike faster. 34 days left, huh? Um. Increase it by one. And bring a profitability, maybe. Unless we have the other one here, too. Because right now, where are we at? 84 and 71. That's not bad. Ah, oh, here's the other one here. Alright, so we can do that one. So this is 15. Uh, more interest or profitability? Honestly, it's already at that. Let's make it more profitable. Ooh, we might not be able to get to that one. Oh, maybe we will. Oh, shnikes, we still did both. Oh my god, that's so de devious and de dastardly. But we also invest in focus research as well as... I eh, can't do anything more cor for corruption right now, so... Not bad. The Falcom 603F Data Storage Unit. Everyone talks about miniaturization, but what does that really actually mean? Human society has traditionally relied upon information on wood, papyrus, paper. Information recorded on reams of paper, filed meticulously in rows of cabinets stacked from floor to ceiling, our world is built on libraries of information, both deeply profound and prof profoundly trite, flinging a light into the future. The speedy replication and physical preservation of information has always been a problem. The Great Laboratory of Alexandria burnt to the ground, taking much of what we know of antiquity with it. And all we know of our ancestors, even a hundred years ago, relies on what information survived in mildew pages and torn pages to this day. And if that doesn't strike a chord with you gentlemen, it should. Our treasured processes, manuals, and trade secrets are one fire away from being lost forever, and making more copies of the work creates risks of its own. The 603... 603F does away with all those concerns. A single loop of tape can hold an entire warehouse's worth of critical records. How is in a metal casing resistant to fire and resistant to water damage and can only be accessed from dedicated Fujitsu interfaces? As users of the Falcom series and mainframe computers, the choice should be obvious. Falling deeper into Fujitsu's embrace. Nice. We get the product cycle. Not bad. And untapped usefulness from Iberia. Eh, not bad. 16% is not bad either. So I'm trying to work on that there, uh... GDP, but you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. 1926. Untap usefulness. Um, I think I read this one before, so you read this one, please go ahead. The AAS in Iberia are the most important job, locating, countering, and ending terrorists. The majority of the AAS's job was sifting through the hundreds of reports, sifting through hundreds of reports to decipher the exact location of the base of operations. But the terrorists continue to change their base of operations, otherwise, the terrorists would already be in jail. Humans couldn't discover where the base could be, so the Iberians had to use something new to find the terrorists. The new computers from Fujitsu were going to be a gamble from the Iberian Tower. They were willing to try anything. The machine recorded alive, tasked with finding the most discreet and hidden terrorists. The computer showed Fujitsu limited text on a white screen, slowly fading into nothingness. Showed nothing but a flashing white rectangle ready for input. Hurriedly, the AAS laborers grabbed thousands of documents from the registry and hurried to see what computers would do with the next newfound information. After grueling hours of getting the documents registered on the computer, the computer projected the map of Iberia. This map contained all the terrorist attacks, reported the possible bases of operations, and even predicted potential targets. The computer showed where the CNT FII bases could be, generalized in a specific area. Yes, sometimes the computer was wrong with incorrect data, but it still saved the lives through the inputs, stopping the terrorists dead in the tracks, and the Caldillos, looking at their successes, wrote a letter to Fujitsu. The Iberian government is grateful for the assistance of the, uh, of the Fujitsu computer, and the success it has caused for the AAS. Our gratitude is indebted towards your company. Fujitsu considers or condemns all terrorists at home or abroad, but if you enjoyed the first video of us playing as Fujitsu Limited, or Fujitsu, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow to see what else we can do with Mr. Ibuka Masaru. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous rest of your day.